So I took a test and to my surprise, it's Rubina. screened in. I am absolutely loving it out here and I think it's just going to be a really sweet spot of the house to have this enclosure um, done and to have no bugs and this is going to be a nice space. I still have some decorating to do but uh, I do plan on putting together a little vlog for my Facebook page when I do my decorating and just like the whole process of getting the patio screened in. So if you'd like to see um, more footage of the patio and how I decorate it, you can head over to my Facebook page for that information. All right, so today um, is kind of a difficult subject if what I have to talk about today. Um, I wanted to film this because I kind of wanted to have it somewhere so that it wasn't just in my head and it was on film where I could come back every year and sort of watch it and remember, you know, what happened to me. Not, not so much in like a sad way to remember, but just to remember like how, God, how good God was through the entire process of what happened to me um, in January. So in January of 2020, let me go back a little bit. In December of 2019, my family that lives here in Florida, we went to go visit my mom and my extended family in Tennessee. And it was a great Christmas break. We had so much fun. So we got some photography done. That was really sweet and I'm glad we did that. I felt great the whole trip. Um, like in my spirits, I felt really great. Our family actually was quite sick during that time. We all had the the flu of 2019 or uh, COVID-19 of 2019. Anyway, I digress. When we came back in January after Christmas break, I think we got back like December 31st. So right at the end of the year, celebrated New Year's at home. When we came back and went back to work, I was patiently, impatiently waiting on my cycle to come, like it does every month. Um, and when it was supposed to come, when on my little app, um, it told me, you know, your cycle's supposed to come, it's supposed to be in this window. Well, day one went by, nothing happened. Day two, nothing happened. Day three, nothing happened. Day four, uh, the whole cycle went by, nothing happened. And so I finally was like, let me go ahead and take a pregnancy test and see if I'm pregnant. Which if I were pregnant, I'm always ecstatic to be pregnant. Like I would have more babies if I could have babies if like you know my husband was like open to it if he were like yeah let's have more babies yeah I would totally have more babies but um so I took one test and I remember I went to the Dollar Tree on my lunch break and got a pregnancy test and then came back to work and used one of the restrooms one of the stalls and tested so it was like in the middle of the day when I had done the test and it came out negative. So I thought, okay, this is, this is, you know, not pregnancy, it's just a fluke thing. Like my cycle's coming, it's just a little bit late. This must have been like, I was probably a day or two late when I started testing. So a little while go, I like a day or two go on and I don't think anything of it, but then I thought, you know what, let me get some of those really, the really nice digital tests that say, 
pregnant or not pregnant just so it would be extra extra clear what I was but I didn't know that those you know the high price digital tests are less sensitive than the cheaper line test I found that out after because then the next time I tested um, I went to CVS while my family was across the street at Dunkin Donuts just having a treat and I told my husband I said I need to go to CVS to get something but I didn't tell him what because I didn't want to tell him if I wasn't pregnant I just was gonna continue on with life if I wasn't so I went to CVS and in the CVS bathroom I took another test this was like at maybe 6 p.m. so this is in the evening time evening urine I took another test and it said negative that must have been on a Friday because then on Sunday this is the a week before Martin Luther King Day I remember it was a week before Martin Luther King Day I could not sleep I couldn't get it out of my mind and by that time I had already missed my whole cycle and I had started feeling symptoms I remember I was working and um, I was um, chaperoning some maintenance guys in a female dormitory where I was the escort I would walk them to where they were working and then they would do their job and then we would leave and one of the things that they were doing in one of the dorm rooms I remember that I smelt everything and not just like a normal nose like a pregnancy nose where the smells just jump out at you and so I remember um, texting my boss and being like oh my goodness I think I'm pregnant because I cannot stand the smell of this dorm room I said I feel like I'm about to throw up and I remember her saying you know do you want me to swap you out with somebody and I said no it's fine you don't have to do that I'll just you know tough it up and just get the job over with and so that was on um, that was during the time where I had been testing but I had tested negative so on Sunday I had one test left because the CVS tests were two in a box so I had one test left and I thought I'll just take this test I could not sleep Saturday night going into Sunday morning I could not sleep and so I woke up at like 2 3 a.m. to use the restroom and um, I decided, you know, I'm just gonna go ahead and take a test because my urine's probably like really concentrated at this point. And if it is positive, then it should be positive during this window. Like what they say, first morning urine. But since I had gotten up for the first time that day, Sunday morning to use the restroom, I thought, let me just go ahead and take a test. So I took a test and to my surprise, it was positive. It said pregnant and I was a whole lot of emotions in one. Uh, mostly I was very, very excited. I wanted to wake up my husband and tell him, but it was like three in the morning. So I texted like five or six of my girlfriends to tell them, you know, with the picture of the test. And this is two, three in the morning. Um, where nobody would respond to me and probably until like 6 in the morning, 7 in the morning. I could not sleep the rest of that day. I was so excited. I remember when my husband got up, uh, I had the digital test on the countertop and he came in the bathroom to use the restroom and he was washing his hands and I had the test like kind of placed where he could see it and I said to him, I said, um, do you see what's on the counter and he says no, you know, he's like trying to wake up He's not as excited as I am because he's trying to wake up. He doesn't think anything's different So I'm like no, I was like, go back and look on the counter so he Finds the pregnancy test and he looks at it and he's just like is this what I think it is? <laughs> and he says he was really funny. I remember him saying how many of these did you take is this accurate? Could this be wrong? Is this test expired? He was just asking me all the questions and I told him, I said that I had been feeling symptoms like I was pregnant and you know, we weren't trying. So this was um, a surprise baby for us. And um, I was just over the moon. I was really excited, but I was nervous about 
his response and his reaction to it all. So I was, you know, cautiously excited because I wanted to make sure that my that my husband was also excited or just as excited as I was. Like I wanted his emotions to match mine. So and he was just being really funny, which helped lighten the mood. He was being really funny, really sweet, and yeah, everything was great. And um, you know, my previous pregnancies, I had told close friends and family pretty early on that we were expecting. I had had three pregnancies and three children out of it. So I didn't think anything different about this one except for that this baby was a complete surprise to us. Um, but unfortunately, joy turned into sadness because just a week later, I remember it was the next Sunday on Martin Luther King Day in January. It actually started on Saturday with just a little spot when I would wipe. And then by Sunday, it turned into full-fledged bleeding. And at that point, I had texted my midwife to try and see what I could do or what I should do I had contemplating going to the ER, going to the urgent care, um, you know, reaching out to the midwife over my phone to try and see what she had to say. Of course, at this point, I'm Googling like crazy because I'm trying to figure out like, you know, if you, I'd never had this before, so I was trying to think on the positive, like if you have bleeding, can you still have a viable pregnancy? Can there still be a baby at the end of it? And I had mixed reviews on Google searches of course as things go you know some people were like yeah I had bleeding early on too and now my kid is three years old and other people were like no that's how my miscarriage started out it was just a spot here a spot there and then it turned into full-fledged bleeding and um, so the midwife told me she's like you know there's really nothing that you can do except for just relax and wait it out and she said I can get you into my office first thing Monday morning to see what's going on and I was oh the next 24 hours were very long it seemed like a very slow day of waiting and I didn't eat hardly anything that day um, she said get rest stay in the bed I tried to sleep I tried to pray I tried to watch TV and of course every time I had to go use the restroom I was reminded that whatever you know pregnancy had been there was now no longer there and I could tell that you know even though I don't know, I just had a sense of that what I was experiencing was not going to turn out to be a viable pregnancy, like some people had said on Google. And yeah, it was really hard. That was a really hard time. Um, I remember I went in to go see the midwife the next day and my we had already told the kids that we were expecting so we wanted to wait until we saw the midwife to see if we would see anything on the ultrasound anything positive before we told the kids one way or the other because I had already told them that we were having another baby and they were so excited so we went to go see the midwife and sure enough um, there was nothing there um, you know from all the bleeding and everything that I had experienced on the weekend when we did an ultrasound we you know there was nothing there was nothing there and of course the midwife told me she said you didn't do anything wrong there's nothing that you could have done to 
not have this happen. And, um, it was, yeah, it was just really hard and really sad and I just I wanted to make this video now because like during this week of September um, because this week is when the baby would have been due if the pregnancy had not ended in miscarriage really sad um, yeah I guess I just wanted to make this as a video log of what happened to us as a family back in January and also to let other people know other women who are going through the same thing or have ever gone through a miscarriage before um, just wanted to tell you, if you're watching this, that there's nothing that you could have done to cause this unfortunate event to happen to you, just like there's nothing that I could have done to cause this unfortunate event to happen to me. And, you know, I'm thankful, I'm thankful to know that know Jesus Christ as my Savior. I'm thankful to know that that baby will never have to suffer any sadness or any pain or any hurt. You know, that baby will not have to suffer through the this sin-cursed world that we live in, but rather that child is resting safely in the arms of Jesus, that brings me comfort to know that one day when I go to heaven, because I know Jesus Christ is my Savior, that I'll see that child again, and I'll get to meet that child that I never got to meet here on earth. Um, yeah. Anyway, guys, um, really tough, tough subject. Reach out to me in the comments or send me an email if you've ever gone through a miscarriage and just how you got through it, what gave you comfort when you were experience a experiencing a miscarriage or a stillbirth or just infertility, any of those issues like that, if you've ever experienced that. You can reach out to me if you ever want to talk about it some more or leave a comment down below and maybe some other ladies on here who have gone through the same thing will just give each other virtual hugs and let each other know that you're not alone when you experience something like this and I don't mean that just as us as human beings as a community I mean that because um, God knows what happened to you and he has a plan in the good and in the bad the, Bi the Bible says that God works all things together for his good and for his glory to them who love God to them who are called according to his purpose and the Bible also says to everything there is a season a time for life and a time for death a time for joy and a time for mourning and so I know that God does work all these things together for good even in even in the moment where I felt like I was all alone and this was happening to me, I knew in my heart of hearts that God was there with me and he knew what he was doing. So, I guess I will just close out the vlog now so that it's not too long. But I hope you guys have a great week. And also, if you would like to subscribe to my channel, I would love to have you guys come along. I cover all things curly hair on this channel, a little bit of low carb cooking, and then every now and again, 
uh, I post these uh, funny skit videos that people seem to really like. So comment down below if you are enjoying the hair videos, if you want more low carb cooking, or if you are enjoying the skit videos. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.